Adventure. Tonight's story by Ron Evans is entitled Keeper of the Tomb. several years, I've been waiting to tell you this very strange and frightening story. Even now, I'm wondering whether I'm doing the right thing by making some of the facts public. But here goes. Some years ago, I was contacted by an old friend, Julie Richards, whom I knew from university days when we studied archaeology and anthropology together. She begged me to come out to South Africa, where she was on vacation, as she'd found something that would intrigue me. My name is Mark Highland, and in company with my assistant, Tom Raglan, we flew from London to Johannesburg. Julie met us there in a hotel, where she unwrapped a stone fragment from a cocoon of tissue paper. Take a look at that, Mark. What do you make of it? You're not having us on, are you? No, it's no joke. I found that fragment only last week on a large farm in the Northern Cape province. Oh, let me see. It's definitely of Egyptian origin. Two complete hieroglyphs. Yeah, but what's it doing here? That's the $64,000 question. Do you know what it's a part of, Julie? Well, Mayan and Aztec archaeology is my speciality, but... Well, I'd say it's part of a free... You're wrong. This was once part of a tomb marker. A tomb marker? But it couldn't be. I agree with Mark. The hieroglyphs form a name. There's a slight difference from the Egyptian hieroglyphs we know. But it is decipherable. Where exactly was it found? On a farm owned by a man called Dirk Fender. Uh-huh. Here, I'll show you on the map. Now, it's just there in the northern part of the Cape Province. Yeah? It's in a valley surrounded by three hills with a small river running through it. You know what this means, don't you? Tell me. That's why I sent for you. Somewhere in the vicinity of where you found this stone fragment is a tomb of Egyptian origin. But what would it be doing here? That's what we're going to find out. discovery like this is the dream of every archaeologist, a find which could sensationally revise our present knowledge of ancient history. Two days later, we arrived at Dirk Fenter's farm and carefully went over the ground where Julie had found the stone. There was nothing. For three days, we stayed at the farm as Dirk's guests, each day combing the valley in vain. At dinner on the third evening, we'd almost given up hope. But why go back to Cape Town tomorrow? You're welcome to stay as long as you like. Well, as a matter of fact, I, I appreciate the company. Oh, that's very kind of you, Dirk. I'd like to, but I think we're on a wild goose chase. No, no, I disagree, Mark. How did that stone come to be lying in the valley? As you say, it's only a fragment. So the rest of it must be out there somewhere. Oh, buried, more than likely. Again, it could have been planted there by some joker. Well, it's happened often in the past, you know. Some more wine, Julie? Oh, yes, please. Near where the marker is, there's usually a very deep, narrow shaft. But that's more than likely collapsed in by now, if it exists. You know, I wonder... What do you wonder, Dirk? There is such a hole. It goes through the rock on the side of the hill near the stream. Oh, there is? Well, how big is it? Oh, it's very narrow. Say about two foot in diameter. It's deep, though, almost bottomless. Has anybody been down it? Oh, <laughs> not likely, you know, one of my sheep fell down once. So, I've had it covered by a bolt ever since. Well, it could be what we're looking for. How deep is it, I wonder? Well, I threw some stones down before I covered it, and I didn't hear them hit bottom. I'm going down there. Hey, not without me. Or me. If that is the tomb entrance, I don't want to miss any of the glory. We arrived in the valley very early in the morning. Dirk came with us, saying he would stay on the surface in case anything went wrong. He also brought two walkie-talkies so we could keep in contact with him. As we prepared for our descent, several of the farm workers joined us to assist with the ropes. I was the first to go down. 
long coils of rope had been joined together to form one continuous length, which, it was hoped, would reach the bottom. I went down slowly, my legs steadying me. Still, I descended, lower and lower, until I felt sure there must be no more rope left. On the verge of abandoning hope, the sides of the shaft suddenly widened, and I was, for a minute, dangling freely, until my feet touched the bottom. I was trembling and breathless with excitement when I switched on my battery-operated fluorescent lantern. Hello up there. Can you hear me? Hello there, Mark. Uh, what's down there? What we've been looking for. It's a stone chamber, empty apart from a lot of old animal bones. Definitely man-made. Uh, yes, there are a number of hieroglyphic inscriptions on the walls. Uh, they're bringing up the rope now, so I'll be joining you soon. Put Julie on, Tom. I hear what you said. So we found the two, huh? I wouldn't go that far, Julie. There are no doors to be seen down here. It's just an empty chamber. But come on down and take a look for yourself. Just you try and stop me. Tom's just being lowered down now. <laughs> Within the hour, all three of us were examining the chamber walls. I can read some of it, uh, but there's a lot of difference in them compared to the Egyptian forms. Oh, yes, it, it's very odd. This is going to surprise you, Tom. You see that symbol there? What would you say if I told you it was Mayan? Oh, I'd say you were wrong. A uh, similar, perhaps. It's Mayan, definitely. I, I've seen that symbol. Oh, and that one, too, many times on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Oh, it's strange. I wonder if there could be an historical connection. Oh, theories have been put forward that the Central and South American civilizations stemmed originally from the ancient Egyptians. But it was assumed they sailed in reed boats from the Mediterranean. What if they'd emigrated through Central Africa to here, then across to the Southwest and from there to South America in boats? Well, it's a feasible theory, Mark. The current and winds would automatically carry them there. Oh, incredible, but it could be so, I admit. And this is pretty good evidence to support the theory. Well, we've established one thing. This is, or was, a tomb. But why it's empty is a mystery. Well, according to this, it belonged to uh, Princess Narini, a first daughter of Lord Tagash. We'll come down here tomorrow with a camera and photograph the hieroglyphics. Then we can translate them at leisure. Oh, what was that? Blast. Part of the rope has come away. Only a few yards, though, thank heaven. I'll call up Dirk and tell him to lower it some more. Hello, Dirk. Can you hear me? Dirk, are you there? Hey, take a look at the end of this rope. Dirk. It's been burnt away. It can't be. Dirk, will you come in, please? The radio's dead. Oh, no. It's as though the batteries are finished. Oh, well, here, uh, uh, let me take a look. Uh, oh, you're right. It's better than the dodo ever was. But that means we're trapped down here. I'm afraid so. But when Dirk gets worried, he'll be sure to send somebody down. I just have to wait. I'll carry on studying these hieroglyphics. Mark, what if Dirk doesn't send down help? Don't worry about it, Julie. He's sure to. The hours dragged by, and the air in the chamber became foul. The fluorescent lamp began to dim. My watch read seven in the evening. We took turns in shouting up the shaft, but got no reply. We were literally entombed. I'm thinking that there, there must be another way out of this chamber. Or, or at least a, a hidden annex to it. Tom's right. We must look before the lamp fades out altogether. I, I've just thought of something. Why don't we... What's that noise? Did you hear it? It sounds like wind. But there is none. Oh, well, there's only us down here. Leave my tomb. Leave it. Leave that mark. It is a voice. Oh, it's a trick of the wind. What wind? I can't feel any. Oh, relax. <laughs> Their imaginations run and rise from the effect of being cooked up here. Nonsense, Tom. I heard it clearly, and so did you. Now, please, just listen. Oh, right. It will make you happy. Leave my tomb in peace. But keep calm. What we're witnessing is a psychic phenomenon. 
Oh, I, I know you're probably cynical about it, but I've had some experience of seances back in the States. You see, my parents were spiritualists. Huh. Hocus pocus. Then do you doubt that was the voice we heard? Well, well no, but well, I... Well, laugh if you want to. But there's a spirit trying to make contact with us, telling us to leave this tomb. <laughs> we'll ask it how. I'll be only too glad to obey at the moment. If you'll be quiet, that's precisely what I intend to do. Now, please listen, and don't laugh. Hello? Are you trying to tell us something? Go away from this place. Have a cheese. Why are you quiet? We'd... We'd like to go, but... We're trapped. It was I who trapped you. Why? Are we doing you harm? Yes. I want peace. You are disturbing me. Why did you trap us? I want to speak to you. The presence of your bodies in this chamber has developed enough power for me to speak. What do you want to tell us? I want to warn you not to disturb my tomb. You must go away. Never return. Are you Princess Norini? Yes. This is my resting place. Here are my treasures, my earthly goods. But there's, there's nothing here. My Tom, let me do the talking. My treasures are here. If I am to let you go... You will see them. You will show us how to leave, Narini? Only if you swear on your lives not to reveal what you have found and seen. On our lives? It is written that my tomb will remain undiscovered for many more centuries to come. What is here is not for your knowledge. But it's an archaeologist's dream. Do you swear? I do. On my life and honor. Yes, I swear to. What about you, Tom? All must swear. Without your oath, I cannot reveal the way out. All right. I swear. Turn out your light, and you will see me. Where I point, you will pull at the stone blocks. Thank you, Princess Narini. Rest in peace. I don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, you can say that again. I've heard of spiritual materialization. And now I believe... Oh, that's a fact. Anyway, let's get at those blocks and, uh, and see if all this is true. Uh, there's a lot of dust and cobwebs. <clears throat> yes, there, there is a bit of give in this block. <clears throat> see where it projects, Tom. Pull outwards. Uh, that's right. I'll have to. Uh, careful. Uh, Watch your feet. Uh, oh, look. Look, it's gone right through. Stand back. I'll pull this bottom block away. Right. Oh, great. There's, there's plenty of room for it to get through. Hey, give me the lamp, Julie. Uh, I'll go first. Hey, it's a, it's a big chamber and... Oh, gee. You, you've got to see this lot in here. You go next, Julie. Thanks. That's incredible. Oh, oh this makes Tutankhamun's burial chamber look like a downtown pawn shop. So these are Princess Narini's earthly goods. Wow. There's enough to restock the British Museum twice over. And most of it's gold. <laughs> Princess Marini's treasures were as incredible as her apparition. Though our lamp was dimming, the glitter of the gold artifacts made so many centuries ago were reflected back in clear detail. You see this? It's eight dynasty at least. Eight? Let me see now. That, that was approximately 4,500 years ago. Let me see it, Tom. Oh, yes, I agree. Eighth Dynasty Egyptian. What a find. Yeah, but one which we must forget about. Oh, look at it. it it's beyond belief. It, understanding. There's the doorway to the passage on the other side of the chamber. Let's go. Oh, please, Mark. Let's examine the contents of this chamber. Fern, there's no time, Tom. The lamp is fading too quickly. Come on. Oh, very well. Hear that? She was right. There's water down there. I can't see how much of a swim. You will swim all right if it's the only way of saving your skin. We entered another chamber, the furthest part of which was formed by a natural cavern. Water flowed gently through from the darkness on our right. Which way would we have to swim? Downstream. This is part of the river that flows through the valley. It's dark and murky. It gives me the creep. Oh, I wish there was some other way. There isn't. We'd better strip down to our underclothes and not waste time. Come on. Now you've mentioned time. What time is it? Uh, just after midnight. We've been down here almost 18 hours. It seems more like 80. Uh, we'll have to leave the lamp here. And our clothes. Oh, and that'll confuse the archaeologists if they ever rediscover this tomb a few centuries from now. Yeah, <laughs> that's a fact. I think the eighth dynasty Egyptians had fluorescent hand lamps. Are you ready? Yeah, but it's freezing cold. Stop lingering, Tom. The sooner we get this ordeal over, the better. Well, who's going in first? I shall. You see the way the water swills under that rocky shelf over there? Yeah. That's where we'll have to swim underwater. I'm praying it isn't far. Oh, you, you aren't the only one. You follow me, Julie, all right? I think so. It was not as hard as I'd imagined. The water swept me forward under the shelf, and I banged my head a few times on the rocky roof of a tunnel. Then, suddenly, I burst to the surface. In broad daylight. The current pushed me to one side, and I climbed up the bank. As I turned, Julie emerged from the side of the hill with Tom almost immediately behind her. I helped them both to the bank, and we sat in the warm sunlight to regain our breath. <gasps> Oh, thank heaven. That's over. I thought that tunnel was never going to end. Everything's wrong, Mark. Oh, that sunlight's so warm and comforting, I'd never seen anything wrong if it were right under my nose. It is. I'm oh, sorry, Julie, I'm not with you. What is it that's wrong? The sunlight. Huh? What time did you say it was just before we went into the water? Grief, you're right. I make it just after midnight. Right. What does your watch say, Tom? Well, the same. Well, maybe the dampness stopped your watch at midday. No, no, not both our watches. And look where the sun is. It's morning. For some odd reason, our watches have been running slow. Oh, well, I suppose there must be some rational explanation. Oh, who cares anyway? So long as we're safely out of that trap. Well, I suppose we'd better go and see what happened to Turk Center. I reckon he's got a lot of explaining to do. Are you going to tell him about the tomb yet, or, or leave it till later? What do you mean by that, Tom? 
You know, darn well, we're not going to mention the tomb at all to anyone, oh, ever. Come off it, Julie. You surely don't believe in that rubbish. I mean, well, it's absurd. Mumbo mumbo jumbo and all that. Oh, better not call it nonsense, Tom. You made a vow in there. Oh, please, Mark. You're not going along with that, too. Well, it was some kind of an hallucination. I don't know, but I'm sure a psychiatrist would have a name and explanation Tom for it. Raglan, if you mention one word about that tomb to a living soul, you'll be very sorry. I promise you that. If you don't dig up that hillside, I will. And I'm darn sure I won't let you stop me. Do you really think I could forget what's in that burial chamber? It could set me up for life. I, I'd be famous a Come to your senses, Tom, for heaven's sake. You made a vow on your own lifetime. Now remember that. Ah, uh, yes, to a spook. Oh, I think the confinement down there's gone to your head. I'm telling Ventnor, and in a few weeks, this hillside will be ripped out. And... Tom, what's the matter? Oh, it's, it, it's nothing. It's, it's just a, a, a crook in, in, in my neck. It's, it's probably from that damned icy water. You've gone very pale. My legs have gone a bit numb, too. And... Well, anyway, as I was saying, in, in less than a month... Oh! Tom, what's happening to you? Oh, no, it's, it's my other leg. And... Oh, dear, it hurt. It is cramped. Here, let me massage it for you. No, and d- don't touch me. You better try and get him to the farm, Mark. He looks old. Oh, Julie's right, Tom. Come. come on. Help me to your feet. Come on. Come on, Tom. Come on, Tom. Oh, no. No. Let go of me. My whole body's on fire. Ah! It took five terrifying minutes for him to change from a living human into what looked like a wizened, mummified corpse. Oh, Mark, what are we going to do? What's happened to him? I don't know. I've never seen or heard of anything like it before. It's for breaking his oath to Princess Noreeny. There's no other explanation. Oh, my boggles, Julie. Things like this just don't happen. But it has, Mark. Just before our eyes. Hey! Mark! Julie! It's winter. What are we going to do? Just see the body and, and... We must take him into our confidence about this. I just hope he's superstitious and believes it. You'll be giving away the secret, Mark. You'll end up the same way as poor Tom. It's a risk I'll have to take. I hope Princess Marini understands that I'm only doing this for the sake of her, too. Hey! What on earth happened to you two? Why, that was quick. How did you get out? Quick, did you say? Yes. You only went down the shaft. Oh, let me see you. Oh, less than two hours ago. I was going to wait another hour and then send one of my farmhands down. So... Just a tunnel into the stream, is it? And not quite. Hey, what's lying on the ground there? Uh, where's Tommy? That is Tom. Ah, you're joking, man. That's not a... Yes, it's Tom, Dirk. A lot of strange things have been happening. Are you serious? That's Tommy. Let's go to the farmhouse, Dirk. I've got a long and complicated story to tell you. Tom, I won't so much as go near that valley again, Mark. You can be sure of that. Hey, but what about his body? There'll be an inquiry into his death. You'll have to tell the truth and... We daren't tell the truth. It'll be suicide. Now, what if Tom had decided to break his oath before you swam out? I see what you're getting at. He'd still be inside the tomb. You're suggesting we put him back down there, Dirk? Have you a choice, Julie? He broke his oath and paid the penalty. Now, why should you be made to pay the penalty also? Dirk's right, Julie. Only us three know how and when he died. Now, leave it to me to handle his disposal this afternoon. Meanwhile, you'll have to report his death down the shaft. Say he fell or something like that. we would be telling a lie. I know how you feel, Julie. A lie it is, but a very necessary one. There's no other way out. We'll get changed and drive into town. We followed Dirk's suggestion. Tom Raglan's withered and dried-out body was lowered into the upper chamber of the tomb, and a large boulder was rolled over the top of the shaft. Shortly after, 
Dirk sold his farm and came to live in England, where he died some months ago. Over the years, I've often been tempted to reveal my dreadful secret, but courage always failed me. Last year, Julie Richards started to tell it, and Julie died. By now, you're probably wondering why I've told you the story, and why I haven't suffered the same fate as the others. I saw my doctor this morning, and I learned that by the time you hear this, I shall already be in a place where Princess Marini cannot hurt me. Produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Duffenthal. Mm-hmm.